Good morning, everyone. You're very welcome to our harvest service of worship this morning. And if you're visiting with us this morning, it's good to have you here, and you're welcome, very welcome as well. And we hope indeed that you will be blessed as we worship the living God. We are pleased to have Mr. Jim Hanning with us this morning. You're very welcome, Jim. And we look forward to the message the Lord has laid upon your heart for us. Jim is also a member of the chaplain team, the rural chaplains. He helps Kenny Hanna. And he's also our own Alan's father there, so he's a connection in this congregation as well. And uh, this evening, our harvest evening service will be at 7 p.m. tonight. And our speaker will be our convener, the Reverend George McLennan. There will be a cup of tea after the service, and you're very welcome to join with that. BB and GB will run as usual this week. Uh, Wednesday, just like the Holy Wednesday, midweek, in Ballaroni at 8 p.m. This will be a praise and prayer night. Thursday, choir practice. And Saturday is youth club again. I can see James about there. I'm sure he's behind me. I see. And just a heads up about a men's mission on the night. That's our first night of our men meeting together. It'll be Monday the 21st of October at 8 p.m. Fellowship and dessert night. I'd just like to say a huge thanks to everyone who helped in any way, especially last night, which was a great night. From the tractor run to the food, all was excellent. The hall was full to overflowing and nobody left hungry and there was plenty of crack. It was mighty. And we'd just like to thank Kenny Hanna as well, our real chaplain, for speaking at that event. That event happened because there was a lot of effort put in throughout the, uh, throughout the week that lay, uh, last week. There was a lot of effort in to make last night a success. And thanks to also today and our, for the work that went into preparing our church. Thanks to all who give their time and talent. We're very grateful that we have those who are talented to decorate our church building. And thanks to everyone else who donated flowers and produce. We also thank the choir in anticipation for their part in the service today. And just one thing about tonight also, if committee would wait behind, there's a few things to give out, and the more that wait, it'll be easier. There'll only be one item each to give out to those who are unable to be at church. Next Sunday, our prayer meeting will be at 11 a.m., morning worship at 11.50, and our speaker will be the Reverend Harry Robson. Next Sunday also is, is Drumlee Harvest Services, morning at 10.30 and evening at 7 p.m. And as usual, all these announcements are subject to to the will of God. Our choir are now going to have their are then tried with only by grace. a lovely intro this morning. I think I need to be switched on, do I? Uh, that was a lovely intro. Uh, thank you very much, choir, for that. I will hear from you later on. Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm, or maybe there's a technical problem here, just a minute. any better? 
Years ago, people had to do out these things. Our call to worship this morning. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, David, for your welcome, and, and Victor. It's lovely to be with you this morning. It was nice to be with you last night as well. Uh, it's lovely to be with you in the church this morning. Our call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 65 and the first four verses. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall our vows be performed. It's you who hear our prayers. It's to you all flesh shall come. When iniquities prevail against us, you atone for our transgressions, for our sins. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We're blessed here in Valerone this morning as we come, as we come to worship God. We come, as those verses say, to, to, he will hear our prayers as we come. He will heal our transgressions. He will atone for those transgressions as he has done in Jesus. And he blesses us. He blesses the ones he chooses to, to dwell in his courts. We come to worship God this morning. On a special morning it is, harvest here in Ballaroni. Our first praise this morning is praise to the Lord Almighty. Let us stand to sing. Come now to join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. 
We come on this beautiful harvest morning to give you th praise and thanks, O Lord, for who you are and what you have done for us. Who you are, Lord, you are powerful, all-seeing, all-knowing God. You are creator. You create everything that we see, from the tiniest cell in our bodies to the expanse of this universe. You're more, Lord, than the clockmaker. You haven't just made all and left it to its own devices, wound it up and left it, Lord. You have sustained us through. You sustain your creation. You made the cattle on a thousand hills. You take pleasure in the flower growing in a mountain valley that no one ever sees but you. And although this creation is still beautiful, it's not what it once was before our sin. The sin of all of us spoils and destroys and changes everything. But Lord, we are thankful this morning. We're thankful as we come into this beautiful church this morning that you have set in process and means to remove this sin. You have given your son. You have given your son, the most wonderful, unique, earthly, yet godly person in one person. We thank you for him, Lord. We thank you for your love for us this morning. We thank you for your love for us in sending your son. We pray that our hearts will be warmed today as we worship that we will know more about Jesus, that we will be lifted in praise when we think of the creation, when we come in through the door and see all the work that has gone into, bringing just this token of all that you have made into the pews, into the foyer. Help us, Lord. Lift our hearts. Help us to praise you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The, the choir are going to lead us now again with the anthem, Every Promise.
on every promise of his word. What a place to stand and what a lovely anthem. Thank you, choir, once again for your contribution to our service. Our children's reading today is taken from um, Mark chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. You'll find it on 1006, 1006 in the, in the Pew Bible. And it's a story, a common, a well-known story about Jesus calming the storm. One double oh six verse thirty-five. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along, just as he was in the boat. And there were also other boats with him. A furious squall or a wind came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this, even that the wind and the waves obey him? We ask that God would bless this, his word to us and to our children this morning. And if the boys and girls come up, I'll come down and we'll take a quick look at this story. We'll know where to sit. Some of you know, and some of you don't know, and some of you I saw last night. Yeah, you were tucking into the chips and the rice, weren't you? Yeah. It was lovely. So this is a story about something that happened on the water. And maybe you'd help me to visualize what it must have been like. What would it be like to be in a boat when the water's going a little bit like this? Would we start to rock a wee bit like this? Maybe you could rock too, could you? Can you rock like this as if you're in the boat? Could you move like this? A wee bit more, a wee bit more. Now the wind's getting up a bit more. And we're moving a bit more. What would it be like if the wind was really, really, really strong? Well, we'd be moving about in the boat, wouldn't we? Isn't that right? It would be, wouldn't it? We'd be moving about in the boat. The boat would be moving and we would be holding on tight. It would be a scary, scary experience. It was a bit windy yesterday for a while here, wasn't it? The wind was very strong and was getting up. Imagine what that would be like in a boat and the wind howling around you and the waves crashing in over the side of the boat. What would that be like? Well, this was what actually happened to Jesus. He'd been, he'd been uh, busy all day, uh, he was tired, uh, he needed rest, but the, the, his disciples got him into the boat and they decided to cross the lake and he was tired because, why was he tired? He was tired because he's like us, he's human like us, he gets tired like we do, because he's just like us in many, many ways. See, he came from heaven, yes, he was God. But he became a man as well. Because that's what, why we call him the God man. He was a very unique person, the Lord Jesus. So unique, that there's, so unique that there's only ever been one like him. Now even the fishermen that were with him, they were used to boats. They were used to the wind. They were used to squalls upon the sea. But even they were afraid. Even they were afraid. And what did they do? What did they, what did they do when the boat was nearly overcome by the waves? What did they do? Anybody do you remember what happened? What did? No, they did something. Now, what did they do? What did they do? Any, anybody remember what they did, or who they got? Who they went to find help from? Who did it? From Jesus. Where was Jesus? 
He was in the back of the boat. What was he doing? He was sleeping. He was sleeping. It didn't bother him. The waves and the winds didn't bother Jesus. And they said to him, Teacher, do you not care? Do you not care that we're almost lost? You see, the Sea of Galilee was a very unique place. It's 209 meters below sea level. It's a very low place, and the winds just can come very suddenly, and the waves just come very suddenly. But even the fishermen that were in the boat with them, Peter and John, they were afraid too. Jesus was asleep then, but he's never asleep now. Did you know that? That Jesus is never asleep. If you need Jesus... He's always available. And what did he do? When they got him, when they woke him, and they said, come here, what did he do? Get up. What did he do, Thomas? Do you remember? Anybody remember? Yes, quiet, be quiet, be still, he said to the waves. And immediately, immediately, it says, the waves stopped. It just didn't slow down slowly. It says immediately they stopped. You see, Jesus is God, and therefore he's in control of all. We see so much uh, in the church this morning of the beautiful things that God has made. Jesus is our creator too. He was there at, the, at creation. He has the power to help us. He has the power over all that creation. He has the power to stop the waves. He has the power to stop the wind. And that's the Jesus that will help us. He's never asleep. He's not asleep on the cushion anymore. Because he's in heaven. And he's available. When you need him. You have troubles in your life too. You're small. And all of us in church this morning. We have storms in our lives too. But never forget. That Jesus is never asleep. Anymore. Ask him. And he'll help you. Ask him, and you must trust him. We trust him. We really trust him because he has power. He has power over all things because he's really God. Thank you for listening so well. And you, uh, we sing your hymn now, do we? And then you go out. You go back to your seats. Okay, thanks very much for listening so well.
We now worship God in our offering. Our offering will now be received. pray again. Our Father, we just we just thank you this morning for the blessings that you have showered upon us in this place. As we see the tokens of your beauty of your world brought into the church, beautifully decorated. As we see those tokens, Lord, of your creating power, we give back to you this morning just a token of what you have given to us. Lord, you would, I would ask that you would bless the offering that's in the plates today. We just ask, Lord, that you would uh, use that to um, further the kingdom of Jesus Christ in this place. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. Now the boys and girls will leave for children's church and, and Sunday school. It's wonderful to have children in your church, for they are our future. Um, and we just uh, thank our leaders and their, uh, all those who take, take our children for, uh, for Sunday school and for children's church. We're indebted to them. We all get to sing again now as we raise our hearts again. Uh, and thanks to God as we sing that favorite uh, harvest hymn, We Plow the Fields and Scatter. Oh 
we come again to join our hearts in prayer, our prayers for others, our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. Lord, as we think about the world around us, we see so much evidence for the sin that is in our hearts, in the hearts of man. We see wars and rumors of wars. We see unrest. The great forces are flexing their muscles across the world. And we sometimes despair and we wonder and sometimes we fear what the outcome will be. What will this all lead to? And you command us to pray for peace, Lord. And so we do this morning, we pray for peace. We pray for peace in the war-torn uh, parts of this world, in the land of Ukraine and in Russia. In the Middle East, Lord, we're almost in despair about the carnage and the damage and the potential that area has to lead to something greater. We pray for peace, Lord. And yet it's the sin of man that creates this. Even in our own land, Lord, we're often dismayed as we watch our news by the levels that man has reached down to. Every day seems to bring fresh stories of murder and criminality. And we know, Lord, that our nation has lost a lot of its moral compass. And that is because they're not walking with you, Father. And we ask for your forgiveness. You see, we have paid lip service to you and to your word. And we go our own way. And we ask for forgiveness. We pray for our young people in our land this morning and especially in our congregation. We pray for our young people. It was great last night to see so many young people in the hall there. We pray for our Sunday schools, our BB here, and other organizations in this church. We pray for our leaders, Lord, and we pray that you would, you would put in the hearts of others to be more committed, to be more committed to leadership. Leadership is the thing that's lacking most of all in our churches, Lord. Because as people, we don't want to commit anymore. We don't want to give up of our time. We don't want to be tied down. We pray for our older people this morning. We can't be here. Help us as um, good church members to call in with them from time to time think about them, to pray for them. We pray for our sick this morning, those who are not well and can't be here. We pray for those who don't care about church anymore. They might come to an event, but church doesn't mean what it used to mean, Lord. We pray for those on the fringes of our churches across this land, nominal members, Lord, who see the church as something they can have when they want. Pray, Lord, for a change in people's hearts in our churches. In the wider church in PCI, we're asked to pray today for Edwin and Anne Kibati, missionaries from overseas who are now working in England. We're asked to pray for the Reformed Church in Syria and Lebanon in that war-torn area. Pray too this morning for our forces chaplains as they uh, minister to uh, the various forces um, within our uh, British forces, Lord. Um, and we know that they're in various locations across this world. We pray for them, Lord. We're asked to pray too for the various PCA councils. And we think of our students, Lord, um, in college and those who are thinking about 
ministry. We just pray that more would be committed, Lord, that you would lead more uh, to that door and that you would open that door and they would go through it because we need leaders. We need spiritual leaders. We need ministries, ministers in our church. We pray for the vacancy here too, Lord, so that you would continue to bless this place, that in your time, that you would lead the one that you want in this place. Lord, we ask that you continue with us now uh, through by your spirit, Lord, that you would continue to help us in our worship and lift us and lift our hearts uh, as we continue in worship here. In Jesus' name, amen. Our reading this morning is taken, uh, again, it's Psalm 65, and it's found on page 580 of the Pew Bible, Psalm 65, we'll read the whole psalm, it's not a long psalm, page 580 in your Pew Bible. Praise awaits you, O God in Zion, to you our vows will be fulfilled. O you who hear prayer, to you all men will come. When we were overwhelmed by sin, you forgave our transgressions. Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house and of your holy temple. You answer us with awesome deeds of righteousness, O God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. Those living far away fear your wonders, where morning dawns and evening fades. You call forth songs of joy. You care for the land and you water it. You enrich it, you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water. You provide the people with corn, for so you have ordained it. You drench its furrows, and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless the crops. You crown the year with your bounty and your carts overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the desert overflow. The hills are clothed with gladness. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with corn and they shout for joy and sing. Amen. And may God bless this reading of his word in our presence this morning. Psalm 65, we look at it for a short time together this morning. Psalm 65 is one of four psalms of uh, praising God for his blessings in nature um, and his gracious dealings with his people. This is the first psalm of those four psalms. I was thinking back to last night and uh, the, the beautiful food that you enjoyed there in the hall last night. There was, there was rice and curry and there was... Uh, burgers and chips and there was beautiful apple tart and ice cream and uh, it was really enjoyable but uh, if we look at this psalm this morning it's more of a sandwich it's a sandwich and it's a sandwich because it falls nicely into three parts if you look at a sandwich if you think of a sandwich it's obviously two pieces of bread with, with the bit in the middle um, and so this, this psalm is a bit like that too. Um, the first part, we praise him for who he is and what he has done and, and who he has chosen. So there's a gathering in in who God has chosen. And at the end of the psalm, we praise him for the harvest. And that's another gathering in. But an important gathering in too. God's provision for us. And in the middle, in the middle, there's a going out. There's a gathering in, a going out, and a gathering in. The middle bit, you see, we praise him for his, the opportunity that we have. 
and that opportunity is a calling to us to go out, all of us, in some form or other, to go out to the ends of the earth, he says. First, that gathering in, praise is due to Zion, the psalm says. And Zion, Zionism has got a bad name in the press recently because very often it's referred to, um, uh, to in, in terms of the is, Israeli nation, the Zionists, as they're referred to. But here Zion is, of course, Jerusalem in the psalm. And it was the place, you see, it was the place that God's people were anchored to. It was the place he, he met his people. He received their vows, it says. He heard their prayers. And it's a bit like here. We're gathered together in God's house and God's place. And he hears our prayers. He receives our vows. He, he listens to our praises. And then it says, he atoned for their sins. He atones for their sins. You see, the day of atonement for the Jews was about this time of year. It was October time. So in a sense, it was harvest time for the Jews as well. It was about this time of year. Even verse 11 says, you crown the year with your bounty. I would indicate the same thing. So as you look at the psalm together, verses 1 to 4, and a better translation of that, it says, praise is due to you, O God and Zion. But the actual translation would say that praise waits in silence. Praise waits in silence. And that would seem a bit of a contradiction, would it not? Praise and silence. But I think God is saying to us this morning, he's saying, be still, stop, and reflect. We reflect as we look around us as, as the beauty of his creation and the beauty of the decorations as we come in through the front door and we come on into the church. Let's do that for this short time together. We reflect together. You see, the order in Psalm 65 comes firstly, reflect on God, and then praise for the harvest. So it's an important order that, that we reflect on God first, that we think about him. We think about who he is and what he has done. And then we can praise him for the harvest. So, so he says, be still, stop, reflect. Look at me, he says. Look at me. Sometimes we've heard that ourselves in our own conversations, don't we? Sometimes we say, look at me when I'm talking to you. Maybe some of the gentlemen in our congregation would know that phrase quite well. We're maybe not listening when we should be. We're not paying attention when someone's trying to talk to us in the house. Look at me when I'm talking to you. God's sort of saying that to us this morning. Look at me. Are we hungry? We were well filled last night. Are we hungry again this morning? Are we hungry for this God? Are we hungry for what he can give us? Or are we just satisfied with the crumbs? As we move on, verse 2 says, You who hear our prayers, you who hear and answers our prayers. That should encourage us this morning to continue to pray and to pray more, to pray more. So many people pray for us in the Royal Chaplaincy. It's unbelievable. In so many different parts of the country, so many people are praying for us. And we know the power of that. We know it and we feel it. And it's a great benefit when you know that others are praying for you. It's a good strength. It gives you strength. It gives you energy, actually, when you know that others are taking time out to pray for you. Could you pray more? God's asking us. Well, of course we could pray more. And it's good to know that 
prayer is a thing that can continue through the day. It's nice, yes, to have a special time. But sometimes the time runs out, doesn't it? Well, we're not told that it has to be like that. God never said that. We can continue to pray as the day goes on. Every step. Sometimes it happens with us in the work as well. You know, uh, you see someone you want to talk to in the mart and you think to yourself, What's, what am I going to say? And then you say, Lord, give me the word to say here for this man or this person, this woman. Give me a word to say. Give me an opening. Just a, if you like a prayer on the wing, I find it so helpful. And verse 3 are we overwhelmed by our sins? He's saying here. You see, he forgives our sins. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Atonement. The day of atonement was about this time of the year for the Jew as well. Atonement. An atonement for us this morning is another picture. It's another picture of what God has done on the cross. Do your sins overwhelm me, you say? Do your sins drag you down? Are you dragged down? Is there a heavy weight upon you? You see, only Jesus, only Jesus can lift that weight. Of course, we have to ask. We have to come to the point. We have to need to know that we need our sins atoned for. We have to say, Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. Forgive me, and he will. He's a God who keeps his promises. Then there's this gathering in I talked about, that part of the sandwich. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near, he says in verse 4. See, that picture is a great gathering in of God's people. And that had continued through the Old Testament. And of course, after the resurrection of our Lord Jesus, that gathering in of God, God's people uh, continued apace. And so it still does today. Blessed, is, blessed are the people you choose. You choose. It's all of God. It's all of God. You see, we can contribute nothing to our salvation. Jonathan Edwards says, except for the sin that makes it necessary. And the choir sang it earlier, didn't they? Only by grace. And it is only by grace that God chooses us. You see, that's a, it's a comfort in the work too, I find. It's such a comfort, you know, that very often... Uh, the door doesn't open when you think it needs to open. Uh, and you continue in the work and you approach people and you befriend people. But the door doesn't always open. But it's a blessing, you know, because we believe that if he opens the door, then he will open the door in his, in his time, in his good time. God will open doors for us. And we must continue to pray. What will I say, Lord, I say? To these people. And God often gives you the word to say. Surprising. But sometimes he doesn't open a door. And it is a slug. And it's the, it's the same for all work. And, and, and many of us would like to say something to our friends about Jesus. And it's not easy. But a prayer beforehand. A little prayer. And he's training us. He's training us. Every day he's training us to do it. And we have to let him. We have to let him. Yes, there's a great gathering in before there's a going out. Secondly, we praise God for the opportunity. Verse 5, for it says he is the hope of all the ends of the earth. And all those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe of you. So this is the opportunity. God chooses his people. 
But then he gives us an opportunity. He gives us a work to do. Yes, there's a work in the church. Of course, there's a work in the church. But there's also a, a, a commitment. We're required. We're commanded to do something and to tell others. You see, at the time this psalm was written, God's people were his chosen people. And they were to be a witness to the nations around. And they didn't, sometimes they did, and sometimes uh, they were negligent and didn't. And God judged them for it. But there's an opportunity for us in the same way. Go ye into the, all the world and preach the gospel. He has said that. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to do it. To be chosen for this work. Verses 6 and 7. He it is who is girded with might. He stills the roaring seas and the tumult of the peoples. There's tumult all right. There's plenty of tumult out there at the moment, isn't there? There's tumult in the nations. We've been praying about it just now. Ukraine, Iran, Lebanon, Gaza, bigger nations on the fringes, supplying, sponsoring. Then he says, you are our salvation, O God our salvation. He is our hope. He is the hope of all people. All people. This is saying all people. Sometimes we think of our own people. But here he's saying all people, there's no racism and there will be no racism in heaven. Those that are chosen, those that are gathered in are from all people. What a day that will be when we gather together in Christ. See, there's a challenge here too for us to move beyond our borders. We do think, provincially we do think. But in some ways the world is coming to us when you think about it. The nations are coming to this land. We have many nations now here. And we do, we worship in our boxes. But the church has to, the church has to have courage to move out. And it's not easy, but there are ways, there are ways to learn. And, and working with Kenny, I have learned so much of how, just how to reach out. And the, one of the words that's so hard, the hardest, I think, to say is the, is, the, is the word Jesus. Is the word Jesus. But it's the most wonderful word. And it's the word that will change people. Step by step we get there. Um, We've been at it now for two years uh, and I have learned so much along the way. There's a challenge for you here in this r lovely rural part of County Down. You can engage with us and I'm sure you have engaged with us and we thank you for that. We thank you for that. Uh, and you know, um, Kenny left these last night um, and there's a, um, a mission coming up at the, at the co-ops, um, 14th to the 17th of November. Um, and we ask for your prayers for that. Uh, we might ask for your help a little bit of that as well in the evenings. Uh, if maybe if someone could help with the tea. Uh, it's something I'll talk to Victor about uh, later. You know, but there's things you can do. You can pray. You can pray for the work. You can pray for outreach generally. You can engage with us. You have people here with knowledge and skills, more than you think. And if we can help you in any way along that road, we'd be delighted. Kenny would be delighted to do to do it. He is he is pulled, he is spread very thinly, no doubt. But if you really want it, help. The team is the four of us at the moment. Kenny, uh, Simon, who's based in the faith mission, but also helps a lot with the work. Simon Walsh, 
who's a, a local Walsh from these parts. David Johnson uh, from Loch Gall, who's a businessman, apple grower, very knowledgeable man in the farming world, and myself. Um, but let me encourage you this morning. Let me encourage you. Um, there's two Bible studies now taking place, one on Hilltown and one on Kiltoo. We visit four marts in this area, South Armagh and South Down. But um, there are two other marts in South Armagh, and one of them, the, the answer is no. But just yesterday, I was in Cross Midlen for the first time, and there was a welcome, a genuine warm welcome. And it's not, for me, it wasn't the easiest place to go. But it's wonderful what happens when people pray. And we've been praying for an opening in that area. It's an area that's been neglected, very much neglected. But you do find when you're in the march that uh, sometimes Roman Catholic people are more eager and more open to speak. And some of our own people are hard. We need to pray that, that hard hearts will be softened. And we need to pray for openings. You may not be able to do the work yourself, uh, to, to speak to others or, or to be involved in that sort of thing. But, you know, it's not, and it's not for everyone anyway. But there's much that you can do. You can pray for us. You can talk about these things. You can promote them. Yes, we praise God this morning. Praise is due to him for who he is and what he has done. We praise him for that gathering in of his people. We praise him for the opportunity that we have to go out. But lastly, this morning we praise him for that gathering in, that second gathering in of the harvest itself. God's provision. God's provision for us. And the psalm leads on to that, doesn't it? Doesn't it lead on to it? You visit the earth and you water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide their grain. And so you have prepared it. Prepared it. The water is fur you water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening its with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills geared themselves with joy. The meadows closed with flocks. The valleys decked with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. What provision? What provision? Our beautiful countryside. You live in a beautiful part of the countryside. And it talks about the river of God here. And I just thought about it as I was coming over the bridge there. As you were coming out over the hill this morning, you could see the bridge there and the hills in the distance and the valley. You live in a beautiful place. And here we have a vision, a picture of a beautiful place. A beautiful valley. The river of God is flowing through it. You visit the earth and you water it. You greatly enrich it. That's God's fertility, is it not? God's fertility. See, we're now rediscovering that the soil is the most important thing on the face of the earth. Because of the, if we don't look after our soil, we won't have the resources to feed ourselves. And we were discovering that it wasn't a bad system after all that God provided. You nurturing and looking after our soils has become, it's become important again. That soil that's below our feet that we think little of sometimes, but it's a miracle. It's a miracle of organisms, of fungi and bacteria, and worms and beetles that break down organic matter into the nutrients that all our plants need to feed our animals and to feed us. And all of life, of course, ultimately depends on it. God's provision. What is providence? I think the Heidelberg Catechism says this beautifully. It says, providence is the almighty and ever-present power of God by which he upholds by his hand 
heaven and earth and all creatures, and so rules them leaf and blade, leaf and blade, rain and drought, fruitful year and lean, health and sickness, prosperity and poverty. And therefore, all things come to us, not by chance, but from his fatherly hand. You provide their grain, you water its furrows, soften it with showers. Don't think our ground's that hard this year that we need any more softening. For their ground was. You bless its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. There's something magic about a seed if you look at it in the palm of your hand. There's something wonderful and magical about a seed that looks dry and dead in the palm of your hand and yet sown in last autumn or sown this springtime and you have the evidence of it around the church and people would tell you that it happens by chance the wagon tracks overflow I couldn't really understand that in my version until I thought about it and realised that the carts are so full they're full at the wagon tracks they're overflowing and the wagon tracks are full as well. We have so much, we have so much to be thankful for. As we look around the meeting house, we see evidence of it. It seems almost too good to be true, this, this vision of this valley, does it not? Is there not something here of a spring and a summer and an autumn of the future when Jesus returns? When Christ returns, there'll be no weeds, there'll be no disease, there'll be no TB or BBD in our cattle, or blue tongue to worry about. There'll be no thorns and thistles and ducks, or wars and jealousy. Yes, we've seen in this harvest psalm this morning a gathering in of his people. And then commissioned to go out, a going out. And finally, that picture, that beautiful picture of the gathering in. The gathering in. We thank God for his provision this morning. But we thank him even more for the provision of Jesus. Will you be at that harvest when he comes? I asked you this morning. It's a direct question. Will you be at that harvest when he comes? We pray that you will. And we thank him in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We come to praise our, our final praise this morning. Is praise is the, the how great is our God. Let us stand to sing. Time is in his hands, beginning and the end. 
Our Father, we just thank you this morning for the sense of your presence with us in this place. We thank you for your provision for us. We thank you for your love for us. And we thank you for your word. And we just ask now that you part us with your blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit would be with us, each one, and with those whom we love from this day forth and forevermore. Amen. Trembles at his voice. How great. 